And hello, we're live. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. I'm Noed, designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is Pedro, wearing a red shirt. What's going on, Red M. Pedro has creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is a show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects for you and me and him, everybody. Hopefully, general audiences as well. Yes. Hey, everybody in the chat room, we are streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. We do this show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. So, we're live. This week's coupon code is HDMI Boost. You can use this at checkout if you want to pick something up in the shop, support the show, support your maker habit, and get 10% off HDMI Boost. Real quick, hello everybody in the chat room. I want to give a shout out to Carter Tennis. How you doing, buddy? Because Jeff told us to. We got Andre, Galactic 3D, Philip Moyer, Dennis, Salas, Stuff with Kirby, John Anderson. Greg is in the Greg. chat. Greg. George. <laughs> Velda Kaz. Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Vicon Anthony. Dam. What is going on, everybody? And Kirby, of course. This is, what month are we in? May 31st. <laughs> we it's had June. It is June. First? It's tomorrow? Tomorrow, yeah. A whole half of the year has already passed by. When if you guys have missed... When you're busy making, you don't know what day it is. I know. If you guys have missed any of the projects from the whole half of this year, make sure to check out the playlist for... Or just, printing on. Just go on Instagram printing. and get daily grams. We also have... Oh. Yeah. Free we have free shipping. <laughs> we have free shipping for anybody who orders uh, $200 or more and they're in the States you get free ground shipping from UPS, because we can do that. Uh, same day delivery for fine folks in New York City, certain zip codes, so check out uh, the Adafruit blog or the Adafruit site if you want same day delivery and you're in New York. We also have Adafruit Daily, which is like a daily newsletter thing. You can get different categories, biohacking, uh, 3D printing, wearables, and maker business, which is my favorite. We have this new, new, what new news. What about the new products? Yeah. Oh, we have a newsletter for that as well. Yeah. It's called the New 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 from Adafruit. That's right. So you, you have, have to, to subscribe that for that. Uh, I forget the link for that. It's adafruit.com slash... New New New, I think. Or newsletter. New, yeah, just adafruit.com slash newsletter. Cool. So Wait. check that out so you can get up to date on all the new products. We have so many that come out throughout the week. That's right. So check that out and get updated on that. Mm -hmm. Again, quick programming note. 3D Wednesdays. We do 3D Thursdays too, but we, we do the show on Wednesdays. Because we're weird like that. But anyway, you can check us out every Wednesday at 11 a.m. In okay. all honesty, it shortens our week. This is really like our Friday, so. Well, I, I, we I got to I gotta <laughs> keep on trucking as soon as the show's over, so I got to get through this. So this week's project is a portable HDMI display. You know what? This is like our fifth one. We just keep making them. We just keep making we better ones. We have so many different display oh. sizes and... If you look at the YouTube description, I actually linked all of them and I was surprised just how many they are. We have so many of them. So many sizes, so many yeah. different types of compatibilities. We have like Arduino ones, we have Raspberry Pi ones. But this ones. one specifically, I haven't made an enclosure just for the breakout in the screen. So I want to talk about the screen and all the different options that we have for screens because depending on your project, you're going to need to pick the right screen. Okay, so let's take a look at them now. Uh, obviously, you can check out the guide on the Adafruit Learning System. We'll do that in a second. I just want to show you the screens. So this is a 5-inch TFT display, and it's a lot like Pedro's uh, project. Yeah, so last week we yeah, had the 7-inch all-in-one contained mini PC project. That's right. Which has a full-blown Windows PC on the back with our lovely little HMI ribbon connectors on the back, so you can switch those around. I want to see the comparison to this 5-inch. Yeah, Actually, so this is the 5-inch Let's compare inch it one, once you show the enclosure one. So move this out of the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the one fully enclosed. So there she is. You can see the massive difference on that. So just about uh, size-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't have any batteries inside of this one. This one has all the yes, batteries inside. Oh, this one has a battery as well. Yeah, and power boost. Wow. That mm -hmm. is tiny. Yeah. And this is as thin as I was able to get it without crushing anything inside there. Yeah. So, man, that's, five to seven, thin. you don't think would be <laughs> such a major difference, but whoa. Yeah, it's a, it's a big difference. So if you want something that's smaller, 
but still the same resolution. They both have the same resolution, 800 by 480. This is actually why we have so many different types of monitors yeah, yeah. and displays. So, so let me get to that. Sizing, there's different yeah, so applications. There's two versions of this guy, right? So let's look at the back here. This has the display driver and the screen all contained in this one little unit, which is awesome. It's using the TFP401 display driver, which does the DVI encoding for HDMI. So you have the HDMI connector right on there. You have a USB port where you can power, and you have all these pins, so you can power it through other means, like a power boost, for example. The cool thing about this is it has mounting tabs. So all these little mounting tabs can be mounted to a specific uh, thing. It's the thing about this, though, is that your HDMI connector will always be here, right? Well, let's say you don't want it there. Let's say you want your HDMI port down here or over there or up or pointing somewhere else. This is why we took all the guts here and put it in its own breakout. This is the smallest as you can get. This is the exact same circuit, but knocked off here in its own little breakout. So what's cool about this is you can then take just the display and create something that is much more customized. So it is supposed to connect this way. So now your HDMI connector is over here. You could flip this over and, and put it over here and then your display is over here. That's still a little limiting. You don't have much freedom to put it where you want. So that's why Lamar wanted to carry these guys. This is a little FPC 40 pin breakout. So what you can do with this is get this ribbon cable, plug this in here, and then plug this in here. So now what you, what you get, well, you plug it in this way. What you get is this super extended uh, HDMI display. So I'm just kind of... <laughs> So what you can do is you can kind of put this where you want. This flexes around, you can, fit, you can bend it if you want, no worries, because it's a flex cable. And now you can put this wherever you want. So for this project, I specifically want it to be on this right-hand side so that when I, the camera's pointing at me, I could actually have it in a better position. Another thing I, I didn't talk too much about is that I have a built-in camera screw insert adapter. So this is just uh, screwed in there. We sell these little guys here. This is a 3 eighths to a quarter 20, your standard tripod thing. But it's really cool. So when you, when you pop this open, notice that there are no screws. So using, leveraging the stuff we learned from all the other projects that use snap fit uh, nubs, we did the same thing here. So you can see here uh, where the FPC connector is and then how I'm able to position it over there. It works out really well here. Uh, the battery is right there. This is the 2500 milliamp LiPo battery. This guy takes, uh, it only, what is it, 500 milliamps of current it draws. So you get something like six hours of, of standby time, which is awesome. Actually more than that for standby. Uh, you get six hours like continuous and then like 20 hours plus if it's just standby. Uh, this power boost has a built-in uh, USB charger, of course, so you can charge the battery. It has a charging rate of 100 milliamps, so it's a little slow, but it's, it's pretty good. So that's how that's working. Everything fits, of course, in the case. Everything's mounted with these, with these four screws, two screws over here, uh, and just mounting tack over there. But everything fits in there. It's nice and thin. The slide switch has its own little holder, and everything just crunches in like that. Hopefully none of the cables now. <laughs> All the cables are nicely routed, so that there's no need to worry about that. There's this cable. Let's go ahead and test this out. So we're gonna plug in our Raspberry Pi and do a quick little test with the Raspberry Pi just to show it off. I'm gonna plug in my Raspberry Pi. So this is the Pi 3 in the official Raspberry Pi case. It looks awesome. These <laughs> HDMI connectors, we're working really hard to get these in the shop. So soon you'll be able to get these, maybe in a couple weeks or so, but they're really, really thin like Pedro was saying and they're like the Lego of of HDMI connector. So I'm going to plug this in here now. The display is already turned on and I'm just going to plug some power in. This is uh, powering off a battery right here and hopefully it boots up once I hit the on button over here. So when you're using this with the Raspberry Pi, you do need to modify your config.txt file. That's a, a, little, a little text file that you can tell the Pi uh, how to kind of, how, how, what the resolution is. So since this is a kind of an odd resolution at 800 by 480, you, you do need to tell it that. So that way it's able to do the full, uh, the full resolution. Otherwise we get like a black screen over here. But this works really well. It's got a pretty decent viewing angle. 
and uh, the contrast and, and brightness and all that is, is pretty good uh, for a nice like uh, kind of entry level um, display. This is just telling me that SSH is turned on and you should change your password. But this is running the new Pixel Raspbian operating system. So what can you actually display on here? You can do things like the internet. What I like about the Pi 3 the most is that of course it has built-in Wi-Fi, so I only have one dongle here. This is the dongle for the, oh, so handy. the USB keyboard. This is a full USB keyboard. It's from Rai, I want to say. It's got like a nice metal backing. It's got a USB charging here and on and off switch. And your, your two mouse buttons are over here, arrow buttons are over here. So it, it, it feels pretty nice, and it's nice and thin, as you can see. Uh, so where am I here? I'm at the Pi Foundation, right? So, so if you guys have ever Raspberry tried this Pi? with a Raspberry Pi 2 or a 0, um, you might have seen some of the struggles with just animations on the web in general, like right. CSS animations are struggle a little bit, but on a Raspberry Pi 3, they yeah. run pretty close to full speed, don't they? I think so. Let's take a look here. So I, I loaded so this, up the Magpie website. Um, so we got, uh, who was it, I think? Uh, we got questions. Jeff is asking, will this work with any Raspberry Pi? Yes, it will work with any Raspberry Pi that has HDMI, which happens to be all of them, right? The only difference would be, I think the, the Zero has the uh, smaller... Um, That's right, you will need a mini, mini. HDMI to regular HDMI, mm -hmm. which is fine. We sell little adapters that you can get. Or if um, you stick around, soon we'll carry out, or we'll carry the littler one as well. Yeah. So this is great for your Pi, of course, but it, it's going to work with anything. So it'll work with your camera. I, I was tested it out with my GoPro, which worked really well. That actually was a very good rig there using I know, the, it's um, so the slim extrusions to make the little box cage yeah, out of it. gives you uh, some good sort of um, stabilization. Combined with the GoPro Hero 5's oh, that's um, built-in <laughs> image stabilization. That's I was like, man, this looks so good. And I was like, it, no, 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 it's software that's doing that. There's stabilization oh, okay. on it, yeah. Okay, cool. But this is going to work for lots of different things. Anything that has HDMI, which is a lot of things these days. So it's great. Um, yeah. Uh, one last thing I want to show you is a bit of a design thing about how I went about mounting the screen to the cover of this display. So let's go ahead and do that now. This is going to be fun. So this is the cover of the display. And you'll notice that there aren't any screw holes. So it's like, well, how do I mount this display, which doesn't have any mounting tabs, to this 3D printed case? So I thought, well, I've already figured that out. I have these little nubs on the edge of the case that, that snap into uh, my, my cover. But why don't I use those same little nubs, uh, but to keep the display into this little cavity here. You see how there's like a, a wall lining here? There's a wall within a wall. So that's what's cool. But the other thing is I had to be kind of smart about where the placement is. So if you look at the display, you can see that the, the connector, the ribbon connector here, this, uh, this PCB thing, flex PCB, it comes out on the bottom. So I had to make sure that the nubs don't kind of clip this. So I had to make two little nubs here. It's kind of hard to see because they're so small, but they, they do pack a punch, I guess we could say. So the way I install it is I put, obviously I orient it the right way. So this one goes near the bottom which, with this little, little hole thing here. And then you just snap it in. So you hear this snap and you can kind of move it where you need to and then just clip it in. And obviously make sure you didn't break the case or anything. Seems to be okay. So be careful with it, I guess. But it, it works really well. The way to take it out is you just kind of bend this out like this and just pop it out. But for now I'm gonna leave it in. So be a little bit careful with it, but I think it's, it's probably the, it's not the safest way, but it's certainly the most secured way I found without having to use glue or anything else like that. So. That's really nice. Uh, the way I did it last time was I had these giant like kind of clip things and they would always break off. But these nubs are so slim and so small that uh, they end up working really well. And you can see how nice and flush it is with the case. There's not much uh, gap here, so it works really well. The cutout ended up working really well. As you can see, you, 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 can, you can get that little bit of black outline there. So you get most of the thing. Um, so that works out really well. So I thought that was a pretty neat kind of design thing. So hopefully uh, it works out for everybody when they try it out. Um, I haven't, it, I, the one thing I did do is like, I kind of bent uh, one of these uh, metal edges a little bit. You see how, how nice and gentle I, I was? You just have to kind of finesse it a little bit, but you can see 
uh, sometimes the, the, the thing kind of comes off here just a teeny bit when you're taking it out. Obviously, you're not going to be popping it in and out so much because uh, I guess if you do it more and more, your casing will just kind of lose its tolerance. But it's okay now. Uh, I, did, I did this one quite a few times too when I was doing the, the documentation. So it ended up working okay. There's no uh, broken glass or anything like that. So it works really well. So hopefully that's enough uh, to show you guys that uh, you got an okay design. It didn't break the <coughs> screen. I've what done you? that a lot where I've broken screens. Yeah, so know? what I really like about this design is having the FPC connector allows you to angle this downward. So if you want to Absolutely. make like a, um, like a little the old school um, iMac uh, little lamp designs. You oh, can yes. like, have a this hinge. be as yeah, have this be as thin as you want, and then um, have all the circuitry going down to the bottom part of that where it would hold. That's it. a great idea, so nice actually. Thin. Making a, a super thin bezel screen, yeah. and then uh, your, your, all the circuits are on the base that hold it up. Yes. So you can do something really cool. So on the FPC or on the. Um, the brake out there, it does have the ability to control brightness, does it not? Want to yeah, say? yeah, because yeah. you absolutely can pay WM and do like adjustable brightness, or you can just uh, wire it to one of these pins that will just cut the, the thing at 50%. So if you're using this in the sun, you might want to do that. Yeah. So uh, we do have the mini uh, HDMI connectors in the shop as well. Yeah. But just wanted to show off uh, because I don't think we use this in the seven inch or this week's project, but we have done another five inch project this is the first one before, we did. Yeah. which is actually using the uh, Canon um, batteries for this. Yeah. The, uh, what is it? The e LPE6 batteries that are like on the uh, Canon 7D, the uh, 5Ds. So you can get, we sell these as well. So you can use a buck converter to um, bring down the voltage on the batteries here. Mm -hmm. And, but the thing that I want to show off, though, is that you do have the ability to wire these up to a um, slide switch so you can control the brightness on there. Did you already shut down the pie? No. It's still going? Should. So maybe the, the battery's, battery's dead. On that. Oh, I left it on. Let me grab another battery, which is another. That's a cool thing about this design is that you can pop Swap out the battery. Batteries. We have a lot of these Canon batteries because we use Canons to shoot all of, our, all of our videos and photos. So instantly that thing turns on. You can see yeah. how bright it is now. But you flip the switch, and, and there you go. The brightness 50%. On it. So this will definitely save you. Um, It'll some give you juice. like another hour or so. Yeah. So there's just one of the things. I mean, there's uh, when we're producing these projects, there's like things that slip through the cracks. Yeah. Um, this is just you one of the ones I want to highlight there or something. But the the method we have for for making uh, these little slides, which just stay in place, is to have that little backing so yes. that we can't be pushed all the way in. Oh yeah, this is an old design, as you can tell. Anytime you see any of our cases that have screws. like screws in them, yeah, um, it's a. Uh, this is why we redo a lot of the projects because new that components and this come out. isn't this isn't the TPF breakout. This is the full the backpack. This is yes. what's inside there. This guy here, it's got the mounting tabs here, here, and here, and then you have more screws. So there's a lot of screws going on there. Yeah. That's why I wanted to make this version because it's a lot slimmer. And, and I can position the HDMI wherever I want. Yeah, so is this it right here? The, what's controlling the brightness on there? What Perhaps. you gotta do is break it and then... Um, cut the trace? Okay. Cut the traces. Yeah. Hook it up to the slide switch and then you'll be uh, have the ability to control your brightness on there. Yeah, that looks good. You can also do it through software, as you were saying, with uh, PWMing yeah. it. Yep. And of course, super handy thing, we have the shoe mounts as well. If you wanna attach this to the top of a camera or... I think the updated design has this flush, so it'll go completely down on the Mine side. Does, yeah. Yeah, the older design okay. again, <laughs> well. but super handy that we use this like every on every shoot. Yeah, I do. Now I got another so, one. Another way to uh, go about powering this project yeah. with uh, different batteries. We also have the Canon or the Nikon and the. I don't know if it's Nikon. I think it's Sony, Sony and, and uh, Panasonic. Panasonic battery yeah. uh, little holders as well. Yeah. You can check those out, as well as the cables, all the, everything you see here you can get in the shop. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Speaking of which, if you want to pick up the screen, HDMI Boost. You know what I forgot to mention is that we have two flavors of everything, right? This, so we have this one without touchscreen and with touchscreen. You can see the chip is missing here. This little chip here would do all of the touch screen stuff. So you can actually touch the screen and, and control mouse movements. So you can do that with this. And then we also have a touch screen version of this one. So be sure to check it out. The description in the, in the product page is, is very 
you're going to know it says right on there with touch or without touch. It's like right on the, on the name of the product. So if you want touch screen, you can do that. You'll just need a US, an extra USB cable uh, connecting to whatever device you're using. So if it's the Pi, you're going to have a USB cable coming here to the Pi. So a little bit more uh, wire, you know, cabling, a little bit more wiring. Uh, I didn't need the touch screen, so that's why I didn't have it. But you are totally, you totally have that option, right? Totally have that option. So that's this week's project. If anybody has any questions about it, Pedro will take a look. Yeah, Maybe so sorry look. for people who were looking for the files. I did publish these live on Thingiverse. They're on oh, Umagine thanks. and Pinshape as well. So if you want to download yeah. these and oh, do any such, remixing or... Rush. It was such a rush a that uh, yeah, I didn't get to... Actually, I need to power this down safely. So let me do that while you talk to the people. Talk Let's to the lovely see. people. Greg was asking about the size needed to print out the seven or the five inch display. Um, these will, th I think- 150. Yeah, 150 for the- um, Millimeters. For the is, five inch. right, yeah. Or a 225 for the seven inch. And what I'm using as a base of reference here is a FlashForge Creative Pro. Uh, but then he goes on to say, uh-oh, his max bed size is only um, 106, I wanna say. Oh no. So time for a new printer yeah. for Greg. Breaking it apart would uh, probably not be... You could you could break the two pieces apart and then glue them together. I guess that's an option. I've seen people do that with Pie Girl and stuff, which is always an option. Okay. Shelly is liking the snap fit designs. It is definitely the way to go instead yeah. of wasting so much screws for something that can be easily yeah. snap fit. And the most important thing too is that it um, frees up space on the inside so you don't have the standoffs that are blocking some of the components on the inside. So that's, I think, the best. <laughs> I do um, want to point out that, that my battery just died on this. So again, here's why we have a power boost in there, not just to regulate the battery and push it to five charge. volts, but to be able to charge it. So cool. now I'm charging it through battery. Uh, Jeff is asking, what is the favorite thing you've made? Probably Pie Girl. Pie Girl, oh, careful there. Oh, sorry. Those. I'm just trying to put this somewhere. Yeah, I think it's one of the most funnest things. Anything that girl. is... Um, it, 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 it's, I really like Pie Girl because I, I see uh, uh, parents building with their kids and it's just like the most... I will have to go with thing. the Guardian Sword. Guardian if you guys sword. have not seen that. We will show I'm sure everybody's, everybody's been it. making this. I'm really yeah. happy about that. So we have a uh, segment about it. Yeah, we'll talk about that, but um, this go. year so far, it's the Guardian Sword just because it's so massive, it's glowy, it's very sturdy. <laughs> you can beat somebody <laughs> down with it. Um, I like it. It's okay. simple. Um, <laughs> it's my favorite thing this year so far. Awesome. So I didn't get to look through the guide, but oh, it's yeah, check it out. thorough. So the, the overview just talks about what it is, what are all the parts, and some ancillary parts, some tools, of course, that help you build the thing. Uh, the 3D printing stuff is all here. Pedro, thanks for posting that live on Thingiverse. But we also have the design file for Fusion. So if you want to go in there and modify it, add something else, put a Pi Zero in there. I think there's enough room for Pi Zero. Maybe. Try that out. Uh, it's on these three sites. I got some slicing stuff here for you. So if you're using Simplify 3D or if you're in Cura, I have both of them there. It's really important to have the line width and the extrusion width at the right number so that you get optimal toolpaths that make these little nubs and the walls right really nice. So check that out. Circuit diagram is really, really straightforward and simple. It's just two wires uh, that go from the power boost into the voltage and ground of the TP, uh, TFP401 driver. The battery just plugs in through the, through the JST connector and the slide switch goes to enable and ground. Thankfully, there's enough grounds on the power boost so you don't have to share any connections. And it's of course worded there just like that, as I said. On and off switch is broken up into like 10 different steps because I go through just about everything. I really am a fan of using third helping hands and pan devices because they really help do things. And of course, heat shrink tubing. The TFP 401 driver, Again, it just needs two wires. That's it, voltage and ground. So it's going to the five volts and ground next to the HDMI port. So that's it. Uh, quick battery test, always testing that. The display itself, again, I'm using the 40 pin FPC extension board. The board does come with the flex cable. We don't have any uh, 
extra cables that are in different sizes. We just have one size, so one size fits all for this case. Um, and I tell you exactly how to orient it because it is a little bit, uh, how do I orient these, uh, these connectors? I tell you right there how to do it. I always have to reference uh, images as well when I'm plugging these things in because it's easy to plug them in the wrong way. That's a cool GIF, right? Of me like testing it, like shaking my head going, yeah, that's cool. And then the assembly, straightforward, pop it in, make sure it's popped in. Oh, one thing I note, there's a little red bar here. It says, uh, you might want to take the protective film off before you insert it, just because you might find it a little bit hard, or you could like uh, have the green tab uh, kind of poke through so you can pull it out when you're done. Like in this example here, look at this GIF. Look at that, it's the most satisfying thing, isn't it? And pull off protective film off a screen. Look at that. That's very fun. Uh, orientation of, of, of the components when you're mounting them is pretty straightforward. Everything's mounted with machine screws. Uh, just those two components anyway. Battery plugs in. We need to start selling mounting tech. <laughs> like, <laughs> like mounting tech is like every project. The slide switch just plugs in or just snaps into the little three walls that hold it in place. And then kind of orient the, the connector or the, the ribbon cable so it's nice. So it's kind of folding nicely. And then snap fit edges are, are, are the bee's knees. So that's it, final check. Checkmate. Very cool. That's the whole guide in a nutshell. You can, you can walk through it and, and stuff. So, uh, yep, you can get everything in the sidebar or li listed in the part lists here. So it's up to you. That's it. That's fun. Hey, so my boost gets 10% off. Expires at 11.59 p.m. tonight. Yeah. Support That's us. That's this week's project. Yep. Page has been doing some amazing new stuff, which we're going to talk about. Let's take a look at this week's shop talk. With prototyping. The prototyping yeah. So I mentioned it last week. We got more spinners here. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is that it? That's not it. So the coolest thing about this is that this is not like melting paint. This is actually hydro dipped. So for those of you who aren't familiar with hydro dipping, it's where you place a dissolve dissolvable paper. Start from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. You get ink. paper, 2D printer. Mm -hmm. 2D you print printer. on this special paper. Mm -hmm. You put the paper in hot water. And it dissolves away, the paper. And then you dip your object. Parts, in this yeah. case, it's three printed spinners. And you get some very lovely textures on there. Detailed imagery on your 3D prints. Mm -hmm. So hydro dipping is sort of your, your easy way to get uh, images onto an object, right? Yeah, so a lot of people in like the car industry or um, like gun, it's really popular with like guns. They dip um, their parts in there to make a customized texture of it. Okay. So one of the coolest things is you could do that with curved objects. Right, because you could do this with stickers or, or paint, you know, painstakingly with, with airbrushing. But you're going to get a stencil or something right. like that, but it's going to be a little bit more complicated. This Especially with really like, the sticker, you're going to get like um, creases or like bends or something like that. This will completely wrap around your curved object or in this case like a box. That's the galaxy right there on a, on a feather box. Look at this, yeah, it's it'll amazing. it completely go all the way around So this there. is a really interesting way to get that extra texture. You can't get with a dual extruder. You cannot get this fine detail with a dual extruder on there. Yeah. So this so. is great. So instead of using vinyl stickers, because vinyl stickers works for flat surfaces, but as soon as you start curving, look at this zebra print. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, so of course we're gonna do all of the standard cliche uh, textures. Cheetah and, and zebra. Cheetah and zebra, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and galaxy. No, but this is great because this is my Joy-Con and, and I did want this graphic here of mm -hmm. the Shiike uh, icon. This came out really, really well. And we have a full t video and documentation that we're going to do on this because there's a lot of things that we're learning. We're still learning a lot of techniques and stuff. We have a lot of fails, uh, which is always an interesting thing is what not to do, right? Yeah. So there is a whole little setup and process, but Pager's finding some really cool, simple ways to do it uh, using less chemicals and a better kind of workflow to yeah. do this. So if you guys are interested in adding that extra layer, uh, the extra dimension of textures and, and imagery to your prints, to your projects, this is great. I could see this being useful for labels. Let's say you want to put some cool graphics on your enclosure. That could work really well too. Yeah. And 
here's a stormtrooper with like this was a test it wasn't it wasn't, it wasn't that great but you can see how it can wrap around these these objects pretty well yeah so what the gaps that are you seeing on his legs there it's where i was holding it so um, this is why I have these popsicle sticks yeah. hot glued to the back there mm -hmm. so you can dip these in. But we'll talk about all the techniques, where we got the paper, how to get it all set up without using any of those activator chemicals to actually get mm -hmm. all these to work next yep. week. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, this is a lot of interest. This is, this is, this is fun. This is definitely different. Man, I love this little galaxy spinner. <laughs> favorite thing? Yeah. <laughs> I really like that you're able to get moving parts to have the textures yes. on there. Yes, because cool if you were to spray this. paint that, uh, it would it, definitely it, get all gunked up. It might get gunked up, yeah. This one didn't, surprisingly. Like we were saying before. It just works as a regular 2D inkjet printer. Yeah, you know? there's no way you could dual extrude such um, high or fine quality In on there. Inkjet printer's like 50 bucks now, right? Yeah, they're probably free with free? the purchase of something. With the purchase of your printer. You still do that thing, huh? Yeah. So this is really awesome. Paige is doing hydro dipping. Very, very cool. I really love the quality on this one. It came out so good. And a lot of trial and error, really, to get this, because it can oh. smear and stuff. But again, we're going to talk all about that tomorrow, or tomorrow, next week. Next week. Because <laughs> then we'll have content to talk about. Yeah. Awesome. Well, HDMI boost is still the coupon code. You can still use it. Did anybody have any questions about hydro dipping? Uh, they're did asking, where did I get the paper? So I just searched on... Was it AliExpress? We might or? stock it because it took I'm gonna push to stock many it weeks. Really cool. It took many weeks to get it from AliExpress because it's coming straight from China. Yeah. So we're going to try to find the best supplier. And that's actually a good testament to the um, uh, that paper surviving, you know, an overseas trip. So yeah, should hold up pretty well in terms okay. of shipping. Cool. Any other questions on hydro dips? Oh, I wonder how that would perform. Kirby is saying that he's moved over to a laser printer um, and never looked back. That I don't know if that would that might offer higher quality. I don't know, but this is just standard pigment uh, 2D printer, like the ink that's being used on the paper for this. Oh, okay. That's uh, yeah. So it's cool. Obviously, colors cool. and colors on top of other colors. Oh my god, and like having dark. to like you no know, post processing. Like if you could print out all the textures that you're gonna try to get on your part, mm -hmm. it would be a lot more easier to just hydro dip it. Mm -hmm. But again, next week, we'll talk about that. <laughs> no more, next week, <laughs> back in the vault. We need a vault graphic. Edgar Kim on Facebook is saying, is anybody else getting a weird buzzing noise? It might be the printer in the background going. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's a print going in the background. We never stop. Okay, stop, well, well that was fun. We're gonna do shop talk next. Is that cool? Yep. All right, let's do shop talk. So for this week's shop talk, uh, we're basically gonna talk about this week's time-lapse Tuesday. If you saw it yesterday, we, we did a time-lapse video of these baby swords. I'm waiting for the baby swords. This is a design from Matthew Harrell. Matthew shared these on Thingiverse. And these are awesome. The difference here, though, is I printed them in Ninja Flex. So these are flexible. Look at this. This is a baby sword. And it's flexible. They're secured together with E6000, which is a silicone-based adhesive. It works really well with Ninja Flex. It's all flexible. I printed this on my FlashForge Creator Pro using the Flex Ion Extruder. If you want to know more about the Flex Ion Extruder, you can check out last week's 3D Hangout show, we go in depth about the installation and how it worked out for me. Which is still working over there. I printed something last night, actually. So I printed these uh, at 40 millimeters a second with a 230 heat, uh, no heat on the bed, um, on the zebra plates. Um, all the settings are in the video if you, if you really want to take a look at them, but they came out really well. I made a, this version is 130% scale, so it worked out pretty nice. So let's take a look at Matthew's Thingiverse page real quick. There it is. Um, it almost looks the same, but definitely is a lot safer with Ninja Flex. Check out Matthew on, on YouTube. He did a, a great video on YouTube and he does great content too. So check him out. I'll have him linked below. A lot of makes on this one, 36 makes. There's mine. There's like a little baby weapons trend going on. There's like a mace. I think there's an ax. All we're missing is the bow. But yeah, printing in NinjaFlex is awesome. Print anything in NinjaFlex and it's like, wow, this is really cool. 
Uh, it's just a really good test for my flex ion extruder as well. So it came out really nice. There's no active cooling fan yet on my flex ion extruder. And I'm very surprised how well the details came out because it's, it's not that detailed, but there are some, some really nice uh, uh, kind of elements here. These little studs or whatever they are. And all of this is NinjaFlex. So we have lots of different NinjaFlex colors. I think we carry them all in the shop brown and gray and this red here so pretty cool I, I was having fun playing with my nephew he had the bigger one and I had the small one <laughs> and we were we were uh, knife fighting so it, it could be kind of good for this too if you're doing like a lot of this testing <laughs> you know a lot of different use cases for this so um, yeah so if you're in the market for and you're serious about printing ninja flex check out the flex ion extruder for your printer yeah. Very cool. I sent them to the office. I think oh, so there's going to be some sword tonight. fights. I hope so. Can you imagine them sword fighting at work? Yeah. It's like, hey, get back to work, you punch of kids. <laughs> get to making those circuit boards. Yeah, so the um, the wall thickness on this is pretty thick, so... Yeah, it's it, actually... It will actually hurt if you bonk. Matt actually designed <laughs> it really, really smart. So it is hollow in the blade. And see if I can get to it real quick. I want to show. Just check out Matt's video. It's it's so well done. You can see um, that as he's printing it here. I'm going to go real quick to it and steal the video. You can see that he's putting in these little these little uh, 3D printed balls into the blade as it's printing. So it's a rattle. So it's a baby rattle. So you can hear those noises. Um, but I wanted the flexible stuff. So check out Matt again on YouTube and Thingiverse. Great job. So that's uh, shop talk. That was fun. All right, next up, I'm going to do community makes. Moving right along to community makes. Uh, these are some projects that we found by the community, by you guys. So let's check it out. The first one I have here is, of course, the baby sword rattle. But this one's really awesome. This one's from Kirby. He's in the chat room. Kirby G, Kirby81 on Thingiverse and YouTube. He put together an instructables on this, but I don't want to open it because there's ads and it takes forever to load. But hey, this is awesome. This is a uh, weather forecast cloud. So this is CNC machined. I'm going to have to open the, the Instructable. But check it out the Instructable guide. He has a Fusion 360 files available if you want to 3D print it. He's got the STLs. He even has a, a SVGs available. This pulls weather data and tells NeoPixels uh, what color to be depending on the weather forecast. So it's really awesome. It's using, I think, a Python script to do that. Yahoo Weather API. Uh, he got inspired by Wisconsin's gas building. And here are all the pieces using a Pi Zero and NeoPixels, using the NeoPixel library for Raspberry Pi. The wood came out really nice. So this was CNC'd on his Shape Oco CNC. And uh, it's made out of oak, I believe. With a little bit of uh, Danish uh, oil to, give, to really make those colors pop. And I forget what he said, which bits that made this cutting a lot yeah, more simpler. Uh, spiral down, I think, right? To cut the acrylic. What did yes. you say about the acrylic, too? I think you knew something about uh, it. I think he said that this was actually salvaged from x-rays, or the, the, the fusion panels for x-rays from okay, work. Okay, cool, from work. That's awesome. So you get this really nice smoky kind of, uh, what's it called? Smoky... Acrylic, I guess. The fusion uh, looks really good on those, yeah. Check very, very out. thorough guide, so check it out. There's the money shot. Oh, it's so beautiful. I really want to make one. So cool. Yeah. I think I could fit it. He said I could fit it on my other mill. If diagonally, I just yeah. Diagonally angle it, so I think that'd be cool. Everything's there for you guys to do it. You just got to make it. So. Kind of the little bumper feet. Yeah, the bumper feet are great, great <laughs> touch. Yeah. So excellent work, Kirby. I, I hope you can share this on the show and tell. I'm sure oh, yeah, you yeah. can get uh, some nice badges and some stickers. And if anybody else wants to share a project too, you can. It's a great way to, to win some some uh, some stickers and things. So great job! Check that out. I'll have it linked below and follow. Give Kirby a follow on YouTube and Instagram and beyond. He says it was a one eighth down cut two flute, a one eighth yeah. up cut one flute for the acrylic. Yeah, I think it's all listed there in the guide. So if you're serious about it, which I am, I'm going to check it out mm -hmm. more thoroughly. All right, this is a make from Brian. And Brian put this together. It's like, what is this? Oh, I know what this is. This is a page of sword. So Brian printed this out on his Flash Forge in ABS and PLA and TPU and nylon. 
This is great. So he, he posted a make on his Instagram, and this thing looks awesome. Wow, that looks diffused. Yeah, looks, looks very, very well. nice. Yeah, here it is. In like full, it's full size, yeah. I can't even see the seams, man. There's one right there, I think. Yeah, it's so hard to tell the seams on yeah, this one. Yeah, it's really, really happy great. With. So, so thank you, Brian, for sharing that, posting your makes. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. And then Brian Erickson, he made one as well. This is the full one, well, all full six pieces. Wow. So this looks really good too. Good. Everybody's building it, dude. Isn't that awesome? Awesome. I didn't think people would build it. This. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd say when. Looks really it's good. A cool thing. Yeah, it looks like he put some hot glue on the uh, the standoffs just to give it that extra bit. Maybe it broke. They they can be a little. Uh, if you use Depending a power on, drill, they'll absolutely... They'll melt and they'll break, yeah. Well, they'll, they'll heat up, melt a little bit, and then once you get down to drilling it in, it can break. That, it gotcha, ha that gotcha. did happen to me. So pro tip is to hand, hand fasten it. Unfortunately, yeah, you're going to have to hand screw 12 like, millimeter yeah, like, screw inside that. Big. Cool. But it works out. Yep. Here's a make on Thingiverse. This was by uh, T Top uh, R O R. The username's up there. It's a funky username, but look, this cute little dollar with it. This is tall as a daughter. Yeah, huh? Isn't that great? Those are the coolest photos, daughter. yeah. Yeah, so there it is, the fusion in the background there. I think he cut it up, I'm not sure. But yeah, he did. He played so. around with the colors, so he got oh, some looks different nice. colors. Looks pretty neat. Very cool. Printed on a CR8 printer. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that one. So, I, I, What's that one? Somebody asked me about this, who was it? It was like Tony from uh, Sherwood, uh, works with us at Adafruit, was asking. CR8? Yeah, I think it's like a, a really kit? big, like a 12 by 12 by oh. 18, oh, like oh, for 500 whoa. bucks. Whoa. Three printers, so. Wow. Definitely There's so many options these days, guys, yeah. that it's like, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. And the last community to make is just this super cool robot. An this FPV robot a powered FP by a Raspberry Pi Zero. Yeah, this thing's so legit looking. Look how clean it looks. Uh, it's got a HTML JavaScript interface. And it was as an iPhone thing. Like you know, the refresh sort of rate on that is an iPhone. pretty good. Android. Wow. Look at that. It's amazing. I like control your robot. joysticks for that is great. Uh, operating. Wow. This is the Hackaday IO project. So check that out. All the stuff fits nicely in this wow. little beautiful package. Look at this apartment material. Holy amazing. Crap. Look at the wheels and stuff. <laughs> That's great. What a fantastic project. I love it. So check that out, it's on Hackaday, I'll have it linked. And we'll link it tomorrow on the blog as well. So here it is on, Very on cool. uh, the thing, on the Hackaday thing. Super dope. That's this week's Community Makes. I hope you guys like it. And if you want to share your project with us, you can do that by hitting us up on any of the social channels. You can email support at adafruit.com. We'd love to share your project. Or better yet, yeah, where is it? 